Now surely everybody wants a castle, right? That's the dream. An entire castle to yourself? You'd feel like a Disney princess. The problem is they're pricey, and if I were to tell you you could buy a castle for a mere dollar, you may snap it up. Because of course you would. Well, here's the thing. Such castles do exist, but despite their price, people are still not buying them. These are the 20 castles nobody wants to buy, even for a dollar. Number 20. Bodium Castle Now we're back in England at one of the most exciting and interesting abandoned castles on today's list. Bodium Castle was built all the way back in 1385 by a knight of Richard II. To put in perspective how long ago that was, the guy survived the Black Death. You know, the original one? And amongst his contemporaries was Geoffrey Chaucer. That is a very, very long time ago. This castle was built in much the same way and for the same reasons as any other castles of the era, that being defense. During this period of time, the south coast of Britain was especially at risk of attack from the French, so it formed an important part of the country's defenses. The walls were thick and armored, and there were porticles and a moat, and the whole purpose was for the structure to stand its ground offering protection in battle. It survived a whole lot of wars before it fell out of favor and began to crumble, and in 1926, Bodium Castle was given to the National Trust, which is now responsible for its care. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Castello di Blera This is the Castello di Blera, an Italian castle that has stood in one form or another since the 11th century. It is believed, although the stories of its origins do conflict somewhat, that the castle was constructed all the way back in 1024 by the Bovacini Counts, but there are other accounts that would contribute it to another family in 1026. It can be tricky to put precise dates and information on things that happened so long ago, you know. Anyways, this castle went through some changes in the 14th century, during which the family in charge expanded the breadth of the building to encompass the entire village, which then became known as Civitelli Cesi. The castle today still has its medieval structure and fortifications, but over the subsequent centuries it's acquired many fancy facades and frilly bits that have added to the overall appearance of the building. These extra additions date back from the 16th to 20th centuries and encompass a huge range of different styles. The castle is now owned by the state. Number 18. Tiffany Castle From ancient castles in Italy to a much newer sort of structure in the United States, we have the Tiffany Castle. It's in the Pendleton Heights neighborhood of Kansas City, Missouri. Back in 1909, Tiffany Castle was built for the exotically named Flavel B. Tiffany, who then apparently went on to name the Tiffany Springs neighborhood after themselves as well. The castle is a large 4,200 square foot of faux medieval style extravagance. It is a sizable building, and it can be seen from all across the area. I mean, that is basically the point of these sort of places now, isn't it? No shy and retiring sorts build themselves a massive castle in the middle of a city if they don't want people to notice. Back in 2015, the castle went on the market for the eighth time in its history. The price tag? A mere $600,000. Surely it was snapped up right away. Number 17. Castello di Montefiore Next up, we have another old Italian offering, which I've probably mispronounced. This is the Castello di Montefiore in the Marche region of Italy. It's a 15th century military fort that is positioned in a really strategic location high on the hill that looks out across all the western parts of the valleys, from the Musone to the Potenza rivers. It can be seen all the way down to the sea and in every surrounding village. And during the 15th century, the castle grew and grew. It was steadily added to and then fortifications were expanded to include the main central keep with its watchtower. In 1429 and by 1445, the whole castle had been thoroughly reinforced as the wars waged between the popes and the lordships. 
By the 17th century, the castle was no longer playing such a major military role, and it began changing gradually into a rural village instead. The Second World War saw it suffer extensive damages, and it was restored slowly over the following years. Then, by the year 2000, it needed major restoration work to reinforce the structure's stability. Number 16. Capra Rica Castle Now, this is a castle. If you were asked to draw a picture of a castle, this is most likely how it would look. This is the Capra Rica Castle in Italy. It was built back in the early 16th century, most likely as the result of the sack of Otranto by the Turks in the later part of the 15th century. It was originally circled by a moat, which was a pretty good addition in the band of defense. Most were deep and broad ditches that were dug around fortified buildings and often filled with water. This would prevent anyone from entering the castle unless they could go across that water, and they primarily made it difficult for any invading forces to simply scale the walls and enter the castle and for any sorts of siege weapons to be successfully employed. Although the moat is no longer there, the rest of the castle remains similar, on the outside at least, to the way that it has looked all through history. It was constructed from huge slabs of limestone, there are round towers at each corner of the rectangular structure, and there are lots of rooms inside of the building, including four on the ground, and six upstairs, and then lots of storage rooms and more than one kitchen space. Inside the walls, there's also a garden and the water supply for the entire castle. Number 15. Quebec Castle Next up, we have a hotel in Quebec City, Quebec, Canada. Lucky old us. This is the Fairmont Le Chateau Frontenac, or Chateau Frontenac, which is located in Old Quebec in the Upper Town Historic District. The hotel was purpose-built back in 1893 by an architect by the name of Bruce Price and the Canadian Pacific Railway Company. It has 18 floors and sets high up in the old part of town, looming over the streets below. As one of the first ever Grand Railway Hotels, it was designated as a National Historic Site of Canada all the way back in 1981. The design of the hotel is based on the medieval castles that are ubiquitous all throughout the regions of France, and it even has that fortress tower that they're all famous for. This hotel was essentially the blueprint for many others in this style that were constructed during the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century when the railway tourism industry in Canada was really thriving. Number 14. Kimball Castle Overlooking a lake in New Hampshire in the United States of America, Kimball Castle was the former summer estate of railroad tycoon Benjamin Ames Kimball. The whole estate covers 300 acres, but these days has been divided up and a good deal of it's managed as a conservation area by the town. The castle sits upon 20.1 acres and is privately owned, and like many of the other castles that we've seen today, it's a mock medieval style edifice that was inspired by the classic French idea of a castle fortress. Benjamin Kimball directed the railroad companies across the region in the 19th century. He built the castle along with the rest of the estate from 1894 onwards. He lived there during the summer months until he died in 1920. This impressive medieval-style castle would be constructed using local granite. Kimball brought in Italian stonemasons to build the home, as well as importing many of the other materials from countries in Europe. At the time, it cost $50,000, a bargain I would say. I'll take three of them, thank you. Number 13. Granon Loma. Next up, we have a castle that has had some difficulty attracting buyers over the years. Now, this is Granot Loma, located in a super remote and difficult to get to part of the Upper Peninsula. It's apparently the most expensive log cabin in the world and has been put on the market and taken off again over and over and over for many years. Now, the romance of a remote log cabin is probably somewhat nicer in the imagination rather than in reality, and when its listing price began at a cool $40 million, it had some trouble getting anybody even vaguely interested. By the time a couple of years had passed and the asking price had been cut over and over, it was more than halved at $19.5 million, which was still not a price within the reach of all but the very privileged few. So what do you get for under $20 million? This home comes with $450 million. 15 acres, a log cabin house, and a mile of its own shoreline. The building would be constructed using pine logs
Briggs from Oregon back in 1927 by an American businessman by the name of Louis Braveret Kaufman. These days it boasts a pool, an orchard, a wind turbine, a wine cellar, a hot tub, and 24 foot high ceilings. But it's also not had a proper update. Its interiors are profoundly out of style and everything needs restoring. Not an easy task given the ridiculous location of the place, but at least you won't be bothered by any kind of noisy neighbors. Number 12. Leap Castle, Ireland This is Leap Castle in Ireland. It sits at just over three and a half miles to the north of the town of Roscrea and is just over six miles south of Kennedy. Now, Leap Castle has been in existence for centuries, and during these long and tumultuous years, it's been the scene of many hauntings, the inspiration for many ghost stories, and the setting for numerous seances. It's known for being a place where gruesome deaths have occurred, which includes a mass poisoning during a power struggle within the O'Carroll clan. The castle fell into disrepair and was in ruins by the time it was sold to to the Australian historian Peter Bartlett in 1974, and after this time, Bartlett and a builder named Joe Sullivan began the huge amount of restoration work that was needed in order to improve the castle. They had spent years until Bartlett's death in 1989 devoted to restoring the castle, and during the restoration work, they had uncovered many of the castle's dark secrets, which included the so-called Bloody Chapel that was said to have been haunted by a priest. Inside of the Bloody Chapel, they also unearthed a secret chamber which was filled with human human skeletons, and it seemed as if the chamber had been a kind of dungeon which had also doubled as a murder method. The prisoners would fall through a trap door onto wooden spikes, which would puncture their bodies, leaving them dying slowly and painfully. Such a charming history, don't you think? Number 11. Chillingham Castle Chillingham Castle is located in Northumberland in the north of England, and it had been home to the Gray and Bennett families from the 15th century up through the 1980s. The massive enclosed park within the castle grounds is where the rare breed of Chillingham cattle are kept. These are approximately 130 of these white cattle in the park. The castle is Grade 1 listed on the Heritage List, and the grounds are Grade 2. That means that they're considered of historical significance to England and are under strict regulations regarding their conservation and usage. The castle is said to have been the most haunted in all of Britain. There are dozens of ghost stories that are associated with the place, and it's harbored dungeons and torture chambers that have all seen more than their fair share of use over the years. Some of the ghosts are said to haunt the place, including the blue boy, who can be heard whimpering in the hallways, and then there's the white lady, who haunts the pantry. Also, the lonely lady, Mary Berkeley. Naturally, the castle runs an ever-popular ghost tour if you do happen to enjoy that sort of thing. Number 10. The Castle of Good Hope this is a castle fort that was built in Cape Town in South Africa in the 17th century and would be declared a historic site in 1936. During the 1980s, the Castle of Good Hope underwent huge restoration work and as a result is now considered to be amongst the best examples of 17th century architecture in the entire world. It's had a history outside of its original use. It was a prison during the Second Boer War, which was between 1899 and 1902, and then became the headquarters for the South African Army in the Western Cape. These days, it contains the Castle Military Museum. It is a pentagonal-shaped fortress which was originally built as a defense against the English fleet, and as you can likely imagine, it's also seen rather a lot of atrocities in its lifetime. The extremely haunted castle has had many visitors reporting that they've heard footsteps and voices in the dungeon and in the hallways. They even say that the bell will ring itself from time to time, even though it was bricked up hundreds of years ago. Number 9. Puska Castle the Czech Republic is our next stop, where we find the municipality of Blachy in the region of Liberec visiting the Huska Castle. The Czech Republic is very good at spooky-looking Gothic castles, and this is probably one of the most well-preserved of the entire period. It sits about 29 miles to the north of Prague, boasting some of the most horror movie style gothic -y things that you could ever imagine. There are chapels and chambers full of paintings, as well as a knight's drawing room, and if that wasn't enough for you, the castle is said to have been built over one of the gateways to hell itself. It's said to have been placed here so as to prevent the hellish things and demons from escaping out into the world. They are believed to be captured in the lower levels of the castle. The castle would be built in the later part of the 13th century, so presumably up until that point there were 
just loads of demons all leaking out of the gateway to hell and all over the place. The castle was also actually meant to serve as a center for the administration of the management of the royal estates rather than just a massive hell bung. Number 8. French Provincial Castle here we are again in the United States, a country which greatly admires the castles of medieval Europe, but is rather lacking in any of its own massive old forts. So it's produced many mock castles within its time. This is actually a house in the North Bronx of New York, built back in 1926 in the French provincial style. But despite its obvious unique features, it turns out that a massive French castle is not always the sort of abode that everyone's clambering to purchase. This particular home went on the market many times in the years following 2009, each time at a slightly reduced rate. It began at $3.5 million and has gradually crept down, although it still doesn't sit in the price range of any mere mortals like you and I. The castle itself boasts 30-inch thick stone walls that were actually crafted from the ruins of a Croatian castle. They were transported via Italian shipping lines as ballast, which had been the company of the original homeowner. Despite the mad construction, the castle itself contains the stuff of modern life with a proper contemporary kitchen, a massive formal dining room, and the general trappings of the modern day. Oh, and there's also a turret, of course. Number 7. Berg Eltz Castle This is Berg Eltz, a medieval castle that sits in the hills between Koblenz and Trier in Germany. It's been in the family Eltz since the 12th century, and it's only one of three castles in the region that is still standing in its original form, having never been destroyed. Even during the Thirty Years' War with France, it avoided destruction as a result of skillful diplomatic efforts when the French were going around blowing up and knocking down almost all other castles in the Rhine region. It stands high upon a 230-foot rock that's surrounded by a river on three sides. All the rest of the area around it has been declared a natural reserve since the year 2000. The castle itself is divided into several parts that belong to different parts of the family. It would be built in this place to give views across the valley and, and the river and was a position of strategic importance as the river was a major route that would link the Mosul and Eiffel rivers together. Number 6. The Pajama Castle If there was a castle that looked as if it belonged in a fairy tale, then this one may well be it. This is the Pajama Castle in the south-central part of Slovenia, built quite literally in the mouth of a cave in the huge rocky karst area of the country. This offered natural protection to much of the castle, but also makes for a rather epic view as well, don't you think? Known as the world's largest cave castle, it has beneath its structure the second longest cave in the whole of Slovenia, which also has its very own secret tunnel leading out of that castle and into an open space. The tunnel itself was even once used as a hiding place when the castle came under attack. These days, it's no longer the haunt of knights and princesses, but rather it seems to attract film crews and wedding parties, as these picturesque medieval places tend to do. Number 5. Hemeji Castle this time we're in Japan and visiting the biggest castle in the whole of the country. It's also super spooky and, well, full of the most terrifying Japanese ghosts that you can imagine, which is delightful indeed. The castle was built in 1333 when it began as a hilltop fort. It was then dismantled and rebuilt in another place, which eventually evolved into the castle that we know today. It's a remarkable example of Japanese architecture and regarded as one of the finest of the era. It contains 83 rooms and has all the hallmarks of a defensive methodology of the feudal period in Japanese history. It would be remodeled once again in 1581, when a keep with three stories was added to the existing structure. The tradition of telling insanely scary ghost stories is something that tends to happen during the summer months in Japan, especially around the holiday of Obon. This is when the spirits are believed to walk the earth. So, bearing that in mind, you can only imagine how scary the place must get. In fact, this place has Oki's Well, which was the inspiration for the novel and movie The Ring. I'm not really sure why anyone would want to come and visit a place which might harbor any of the ghost-like creeps from any kind of adaptation of that truly horrifying tale. Number 4. Charleville Castle 
This next castle offering is from County Offaly in Ireland, which is built in the Gothic style and considered by many to be the finest of this type in the whole of the country. The first big mansion house was built on this site by Thomas More around 1641, and it then passed through the family into many different hands. Here, yet again, we have a contender for the most haunted place ever, or something. This castle has been featured heavily on plenty of all of those ghost hunting television programs, of which are so popular, and you know, the ones where they turn out all the lights and skulk about bumping into things and scaring themselves silly, like teenagers at the beginning of a horror movie. Anyways, the castle actually has some robust historical credentials. It's located in some of the most ancient of Ireland's woodlands. These oak woods were a place inhabited by the Druids. The castle grew from a mansion to the grandiose affair that it is today, when Charles William Burry, Earl of Charleville, had it built in the Gothic Revival style of the early 19th century. Number 3. Pithursty Castle this castle was built all the way back in the 17th century, and is often claimed, aren't they all, to be the greatest castle in all of Europe. This is becoming quite a competitive title now, isn't it? Anyways, here we are in a place that has changed hands in amongst European nations over and over again since it was built. It has served as a filming location for the 1978 version of The Three Musketeers, and is vaguely ironic if you consider that this is not a French castle, but served to be more French than perhaps those available in France. Or maybe it was just cheaper, on the account of it being in Eastern Europe. Who could possibly say? The castle is located in current-day Ukraine and is a castle fortress that is used as a residential building. Built from stone and brick, the structure has been created as a fortege-style palazzo, I think, and it has strategic significance in its location in the north side of the hills, looking out across the Star River. The castle has a moat and a drawbridge, you know, everything you might possibly imagine when you think of a castle. And back in its heyday, the castle would be surrounded by vineyards, from which it produced its own wine, and was even recorded in poetry of the time. Number 2. Porto Flavia First on the agenda today has to be about the craziest port in the entire world. Built into the side of the cliff face, Porto Flavia in the south of the Italian island of Sardinia is essentially a mining engineering masterpiece. The port looks like a castle that is built literally into some stone on the high of the cliff, and it was designed so that workers in the mining company would be able to lower the zinc and lead ore from the mine in the rocks directly down onto waiting cargo ships. Now, there's been a mining operation in this place since the 1600s, but back in the early 1920s, the modernized mining techniques meant that more ore was being extracted than could be moved out and distributed than ever before. So, it became necessary to innovate the transportation of the ore to make the operation run more efficiently. And that's when they decided to create this cliff edge port. It would be constructed in 1924 and connected the mines by underground trains to this tunnel that opened out right above the sea below. It took a couple of years to construct the port and joining tunnels, but then it was fully operational and reduced the transport costs for the company by as much as 70%. In the 1970s, the port began to decline, and mining in the area was also beginning to come to an end, and the entire port shut up shop in the 1990s. These days, it's a simple tourist destination offering guided tours. Number 1. Casa Loma Castle And finally, here we are in the middle of Toronto at a Gothic Revival-style castle that has appeared in dozens of movies. This is Casa Loma, and it's made an appearance in Harry Potter, Beauty and the Beast, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, X-Men, and many, many others. The architecture of the building lends itself to the cinematic land and has been used in many different ways. Oh, and of course, it's also allegedly haunted. There are so many ghost sightings that it's more famous for its hauntings than it is its movie stardom. The original owner, one Henry Palais, is said to be one of Casa Loma's ghosts, his wife, Lady Mary, is also said to be seen hanging around, but the most frequently cited ghostly apparition is that of a maid who is said to have perished in the early 1900s when over 60,000 people died of the flu in Toronto. Despite the architectural appearance, the place is a bit wonky. It's in a style from an era many years before it was constructed, and it's positioned right in the center of downtown Toronto. And even its name is a bit wrong. 
This is improper Spanish for Hill House. The castle was, when it was built, the largest private residence in all of Canada, featuring 98 rooms that spanned a total of 64,700 square feet. It took the 299 workers three entire years to build at a cost of around three and a half million dollars. These days, the castle is most likely to be seen as a wedding venue, and it houses a museum that is open during the day, offering private events at night, presumably attracting the ghost hunting sorts of brides and grooms. But what do you think about this one? Would you want to visit it after dark? And that's just about all from the biggest and maddest castles of the world. Which of these would be your dream home? and which would constitute your worst nightmare. I mean, just think of all that dusting. As always, you can let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff that is showing up on the screen right now, and I will see you next time.